five, four, three, two, one. I'll restart somebody else. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, DJ EFN in the building. Welcome to Piff Radio. I'm super excited. Thank you for having me. DJ EFN was popping, man. This this is uh, truly an honor. Me being a Miami native, okay. this is an honor, man. That's what it is. You from the crib? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With, with a legend, definitely with a legend, man. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How you guys doing? How's We're doing great. Doing? We're doing great. We're doing great. Thank you for coming to Piff Radio. No, no, thank you for having me. Gotcha, gotcha. So, man, this is this is this is great. We got DJ EFN, co-host Drink Champs, Woo. Crazy Hood Productions, right. Crazy Hood Mixtapes. That's you right. know what I'm saying? So. This is perfect. This is this is great, man. So let's kick it off real quick. Let's go. Let's go ahead. So let's tell the audience, man. How did you get the name E F N? How did you get that it, name? Because it was better than DJ E Funk or Funk E, <laughs> <laughs> which were the first couple names I thought of. Okay. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, nah, that's not gonna work. So I just didn't want to think too much about it. And E F N are, are the initials of my government name. So gotcha. the government hence, name, hence EFN. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dope, keep, dope, keep it simple. Dope. Gotcha. <laughs> Look, that's it. all he going to say too. Yeah. But, yeah <laughs> government well, keep, name. You know, keep it simple. Simple. Yeah. Just keep thank it simple. You, we, you, you know, I don't want to go by DJ funky. That's, that's not, that's not, let's <laughs> not do that. That's what's up. That's what's up. What's up, what's up baby? You got next question. Let's go. I Let's love go. it. I love it. And so again, welcome to Piff Radio. We do have J Pit in the building. We have Javi Ware in the building, the pilot, myself. Uh Shay Speaks Life in the building. And we got, of course, a dope producer said wines in the building. And we are Piff Radio. I just want to let you know I'm so excited uh, about having you here on the platform. DJ EFN said that's his government name. <laughs> but Right. But the next question we kind of want to know is, you know, what was the most talented artist that you've interviewed? Because it's different, right? This is mm. we're interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, it's hard to say who's the most talented. Uh, I feel like everybody that comes to Drink Champ is talented. Everybody that comes, you know, is is, you know, is they do what they do. They're in their own lane. And so. I couldn't really pinpoint who's the most talented. It's, you know, that's that's like a bias or unbiased question. So so I think everybody's got talent, you know, everybody that comes to the table and sits down. My main thing is just I just want to have good conversations and 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 we want to, you know, celebrate the culture, celebrate the guests and and have fun doing it too. That's the main thing too. We want to have fun doing it. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Fun fun is always fun is always good, you know, um Fun is always always great. So that aspect. So how is it like working with with Nori, the biggest? You know, he, he's a big artist. You know, we we know about you know his platinum album, Super Thug, all that. You know, so, so for you, you know, what I'm saying, what is it like working with with Nori and creating this platform, Drink Champs? I mean, it's it, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's a roller coaster ride with me and Nori. We're we're <laughs> we're we're like opposites in terms of personality, but we've known each other since like i think his first time ever coming to miami when i had a store here in miami a hip-hop clothing store and he he came by and jumped on one of my mixtapes and that's like 97 98 so and we've been cool ever since and you know my crew was his my you know like his miami crew basically and and, mm. and he, used, he used to you know advocate for me in new york and my crew and and help put us on the things and 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 likewise we would hold him down over here mm. and we did all kinds of things we toured together we, we we've been you know, overseas together, we've put out music together. So we've done so much that over the years, we we just understand each other. And when it came to doing the podcast, um, which is a story in its own, it just made sense. You know, we, we basically look at it in the sense that, you know, we're taking it back to I'm the DJ, he's the MC, you know what I'm saying? Mm, and and, mm, and we, that's okay. the way we, at least that's, well, I mean, we both say that, but I, we understand our positions on the show and, and Nori's going to be Nori. He's, he's a character. He's, you know, he's hilarious. Uh, he's a legend in his, you know, in, in his own right, of course. And so he represents that and he is that, you know, he embodies that. And then the way I look at my representation is I'm the DJ. I'm the one that's doing a lot of things behind the scenes. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the foundation as well, you know, of, of, you know, like if you look at an MC and a DJ and right. I also represent 
the people from the other markets that weren't the main markets. I represent the street team guys. I represent the the DJs, mm-hmm. the, you know, the mixtape DJs. So I represent that whole side of things. So so it, it complements each other. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, what we got, baby? What was that? What's the next question? What's the next I question? mean, I had the next question, but you did mention though we're gonna skirt, skirt, right? Right, right. Because you did mention that you and Nori are opposite. Now you mentioned he was funny, so are you not funny? Oh no, I got my own humor. You know, okay. I'm just saying he, he's he's a great personality. You know, whether it would have been drink chance or something else, he would have been in some form doing some kind of media. Um, you know, he he just he has a great personality for this, so. It just happened to be that him and I were working together at the time and, you know, I was able to to bring this whole podcast idea into into in, in front of him. And then we able, you know, we figured it out and we we launched Drink Champs. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. OK. OK. Gotcha. Go ahead, babe. So we do got Javier back in the building. Javier, are you there? <laughs> Look, I guess not. He's like, he's like, I guess not. <laughs> so, so, so now, so what is the feeling you get when you were interviewing big name celebrities and then you get interviewed on podcasts like a Piff Radio, a brand that's still trying to get, get out there, get on the radar. So what, like, what is that feeling you get when you, when you be doing things like this? I mean, to me, see, so like I came up as a mixtape DJ and so linking with, with artists and trying to get them to do drops or freestyles or, you know, or work with me. That was a big deal, you know, and, and and it was just on the strength. Like, you know, I'm in the streets and I'm like, I'm, I see them and I'm randomly roll, I'm randomly roll, rolling up on them. I'm like, yo, I need you to do this. Boom, boom, boom. And when they did it, it was a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it really helped my career as it kept moving forward, dealing with these artists and working with these artists that were lending themselves to do stuff. So I felt like that's what I want to do moving forward as well. Like, I want to do the same thing that these artists that didn't really know me, you know, from a hole in the wall. But they knew I was a DJ on my grind and, and they lended themselves to do stuff for me. I feel like I'm doing the same thing, but like doing interviews and talking to people. And it's getting, you know, it's mutually beneficial. Like I'm getting my story out and, mm-hmm. and you know, and you guys might be the next drink champ. So, you know, I got to make sure I stay locked in with, you know, you guys as well. Right, right. Now, you know what? That That is going to segue to my next question. Now, seeing DJ, you know, now you're not, you out of New York, you're seeing DJ Tony Touch, DJ mm-hmm. Clue, all mm-hmm. the dope mixtape you know and i want to say they mixtape djs because they did extend it to do other things but seeing those djs out of new york what drove you to say hey you know what i want to start my own mixtapes like crazy hood mixtapes and crazy right. hood production like what was that passion that drove you to start that i mean i loved all those mixtapes we you know we would get all those mixtapes from new york and miami but and we loved the music that was on them but there was no representation in right. terms of like Miami, you know, the South and all that. And we just felt like, you know, in terms of me and my crew, how could we help build up our local scene and, and kind of get that that pride for our scene, you know? And so the mixtapes was the lane that I decided to go on because, you know, we're listening to these mixtapes and they're shouting out Brooklyn, Bronx and Queens mm-hmm. and, and putting on underground artists from, from their area as they right. should. But, you know, that's kind of weird when, you know, in Miami, there's nothing that's, you know, representing Miami cities and different areas of Miami or or putting underground artists from Miami on. Mm. And so that's that's really the passion that I have for that was like, I'm going to rep the South. I'm going to rep Miami. I'm going to rep my specific okay. part of Miami. And I wanted to kind of like build on that and kind of like how the boroughs were like battling each other, like Queens was better than the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Yeah, In a, right, in a right. smaller yeah. way, I was like, I'm going to rep my specific area in Miami, which I'm from Kendall. And then the Kenton people outside of Kenton be like, man, fuck Kendall, man. Like, you know, <laughs> in Hialeah or yeah. Cutler Ridge or Richmond Heights or, yeah. you know, Liberty City or Carroll City. Mm-hmm. And then, right. but, you know, friendly competition between right, right. the hip hop entities and all the areas to kind of build up our whole scene here. Right. See, I, I know about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Like, man, you know, me from being from Liberty City, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And seeing like the, the Sugar Hill DJs and, yep. and, and Legend. The private radio stations, you know what yep. I'm saying? That Luke has started. So now, how much DJ Uncle Al have influenced you? Because I know you in, interviewed Uncle Al back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I did. I but did. How much? How much that? How much he has influenced the Miami music scene at that particular time? Like, what did you see in DJ Uncle? How he was like, yo, I think this that dude, man, coming out I mean, of Miami. First of all, he's he 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 was a legend while he was alive. Obviously, rest in peace to him. Right. Um, and you know he's a legend, a Miami hip hop legend, and I think a legend in in music to me personally. 
Hmm. And what I think was important for people to understand is like you could be a, a diehard like hip hop head, even into boom bap out of Miami. But if you're really from Miami and you don't you don't really identify with Miami bass and bass music, then you're not really, really from Miami, in my opinion. Like, you, you know, that, you know, when we would go to parties or we would go to clubs, you know, there was a set of bass music. There was a set of reggae dance hall. And then there was the hip hop, you know, set. Right. And the and the bass and the reggae was what she was dancing with the ladies with, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So that was a part of our DNA. Luke, you know, Two Life Crew, mm. uh, Poison right. Clan, uh, the, the you know, you mentioned the and the, the ghetto style DJs, which is Luke's DJ crew, yeah, Sugar yeah. Hill DJs. Mm -hmm. So all of that was a part of it. And then I got the chance to go to a battle between I think it was Sugar Hill DJs against might have been Jam Pony Express. I'm not 100 percent sure who they were battling. And it was a different kind of DJ battle than what we think of when we think of DJ battles with all the cuts. Right. They was right. battling in, the, you know, the Miami style, of their style, which was, you know, they speed up the records and they they kind of rhyme on them. They cut them off and then they say stuff. Yo, mm. if you tell me that's not skills, you don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about because the skill level that they had to do that, I just had a whole newfound respect for them. And, and yeah, we got, you know, I tried to launch a magazine in like, 97 98 called trife life magazine mm -hmm. and we we mm -hmm. had the the opportunity to uh interview um uncle al and the sugar okay. hill djs um and we, actually we would do a lot of parties where they would they would be spinning out as well and i would spin too i think it was a goodie mob show maybe at studio 183rd mm -hmm. that was a carol i think carol city yeah, yeah 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 we used to do it all the time they used to yeah. do a lot of a lot of uh hip-hop events there so so yeah, man, he he's a legend, man. He means a lot to the city. Yeah, he do, he do, man. So now this question was asked by artists in Miami, you know, saying so shout out to Yoda. How can the artists repair the artist and DJ relationship? Like, how can we get back to like the Eric B and Rakim and the DJ mm. Premier and, and and Guru? You know what I'm saying? Like, how can how can that that relationship can repair each other? You know what I'm saying? Because now it's kind of lost. So your perspective, how how can we like what what's that thing that we can do? that artists and DJs can really get on back on the same page. I don't think we're ever going to go back to that era because I, I think it has to do a lot also with the technology of that time frame as well, where like the MC needed the DJ to right. basically produce his live show, you know, mm -hmm. live, you know, as it was happening, you needed that DJ behind the scenes. And so it just became a part of, of, of all performances. And then, you know, and then the D, you know, the DJ is the one that started it all. Right, first right, and foremost. Right. But I'm saying once you got to that point where you had the Eric B and Rock Kims and the and the gang stars and all that, the DJ's position was important and equal to the MC, but they were needed because they did the live show. They usually did a lot of the production and all that. But as time went on, and you know, you have producers that are just producers, and then you know, you have the technology where you don't really necessarily need the DJ or you don't need a skilled DJ. You got someone on a laptop to just run some of your records, if that. Mm. I just don't think we're ever going to go back to that, you know? Mm. And I think yeah. the generation that grew up now grew up without seeing that dynamic of mm -hmm. the DJ and the MC being like one unit. Yeah. Right. And so they don't even understand what it means. The concept you know, like, of yeah. It, right? so, so I don't, you know, I think they know what a DJ is and they, oh yeah, but pretty much everybody's a DJ. You know, you could be a DJ on your iPhone. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but but I, yeah, I just, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to go back to that, man. It's just, it's just what hey. it is, you know? Dang, I, I hope we do, man. I, I really hope we do, man. Um, I really hope we do because the DJs, man, um, they really still they always been vital to the music industry, period. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just hope we do get back to that artist, you know, say they they grab the DJs, hey man, come along and let's do a show together and we can right. rock it out, man. I just hope that that it does uh um I mean you, know you, you, you still have it. it. Like sorry to cut you off, but you still got it in some some people that still know that era but i just think that the the younger artists that keep coming up it's less and less than you're yeah. seeing that yeah and um what the other the thing that is happening though is producers kind of taking that role as the dj almost now like a hit boy and nod mm -hmm. you know so, yeah yeah that's so that like that's a new dynamic but what i would say to djs is that instead of sitting here crying about that era being kind of lost we need to reinvent ourselves and make sure we 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 show our value out there. And if it's if it's not on the turntables, I just think that DJs bring so much because of what we just everything that we do. We're we're natural A and Rs. We're creatives. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're we're we put events together. We're promoters. 
So, you know, I tell DJs, like, let's not sit and cry about the past and what's not happening. Let's just keep moving forward. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. What we got? What we got, baby? Mm. What we got? Well, well, let me ask you this. So is it more do you find that now? And how long have you been in the game? How long you been in the game? Okay. Because uh, you mentioned a, a magazine back in 97. I'm thinking, like, how old I am? One, two, three. <laughs> so, okay. Like, what? Yeah, I, I launched – my company with my with my crew right out of high school and we started in 93 so in two, 2023 we'll be celebrating 30 years of crazy hood productions gotcha what well, well, high school you are graduated from i graduated from sunset i went to killian originally i got kicked out of killian i don't know if Dang, you're familiar you with killian, killian? Why, yeah. why did you get kicked out I, it was a bunch. Of, I was fighting. And a bunch yeah. of shit. They were gonna send me to MacArthur. Anybody that knows Miami knows what MacArthur is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they was gonna oh, send yeah, me there. Oh, they oh. was gonna send me there. Yeah, oh, and then uh, yeah, But I got. They said go to Sunset. I had to join ROTC in Sunset. Stop! Oh my god! Oh, so he was like, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to join the military anyways. Oh, wow. Like I wanted to be a, my dad was a Marine. He fought in Vietnam okay. and I was like, I was gun ho on that tip. And I was like, yeah, I just want to go to war. And then I went into ROTC and I was like marching and turning the guns around and saluting little kids. And I'm like, nah, I don't like this shit. And they kicked me out of ROTC. <laughs> <eventually."> <laughs> man, that's man, That's crazy. Man, I went, I went to South Miami, man. So, you know, we, okay. we, our, our high school was, uh, um, was, you know, we, we played it. We played against y'all quite a bit. You know what I'm saying? The sunset high. You know, sunset what I mean? never did good in ball. <laughs> like yeah, 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 that's true. I, yeah, you had a pretty decent. We had a couple good that. players, but as a team, we never did well. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we we was we was on that kind of like, but we had a good some good teams one year, and you know, so we we was all right. We we, we did we did okay. Killian you know, was so always we, good, and I think uh, mm -hmm. who else? Uh, that was another school that was always kicking ass. I can't South, remember. South Ridge. South. Ridge. Oh no, South Ridge was always kicking oh, ass. Man, yeah. South Ridge, but man, they. I think they kicked almost everybody ass in in in, in high school. <laughs> yeah, no, Southridge is always on point. Them Northwestern Central, man, they've been kicking ass. Yeah, Northwestern. North yep. Yeah, they've been kicking yep. ass all all man. They kick. I think they kicked Central beat us one year. They had Willis McGay. He was playing. They beat us like twenty to nine. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Oh, he, yeah, yeah. Willis had like 118 <sighs> something. It's it's crazy. I can remember that he had like 118 yards. I remember he ran like 92 yards on us, and and I was like. I think okay, he cried in the car that day. UM, and uh, yeah, I can understand. He cried, the <laughs> cried that day, DJ. Yeah, he cried. He right, cried right. So, like, yeah, yeah. Let me, oh. let me, um, you know, let me, let me go ahead and stick to something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, okay, so now, now this is not on the question, but I want to ask you about about because you got an album that's out or coming out, right? It's out. It's out. Uh, it's already out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, another time. Another time. So, it came so, out in yeah, so, 2015. So tell us how you put that together. Um, uh, man, I think that any DJ, specifically mixtape DJ, they their dream is to put a, an album together, like a compilation album. Um, and that's what I wanted to always do, and and I got the opportunity to do it. it, it I needed to be in the right space, at the right time, and 2015 was that time, and it was a big undertaking. Like I got 66 artists on the album. Oh wow! And, wow. and wow. I wanted the album to properly, like I didn't want to put something out if it wasn't going to be right, and and. And it had to represent me in every single way, represent my crew, represent the city. And so, yeah, man, I, I put it together. It took me about a year to do it. Okay. Um, And we released it independently. And, and that's why I still promote it to this day, because we did everything independently. And it got, it, you know, it got a lot of uh, good reviews when it came out. And, you know, in like within like the, the, the underground hip hop, you know, blogs and stuff like that in that mm -hmm. scene. But I'm still promoting it to this day. Yeah. You say, so do you got another album in the works? Right I mean, now, or it's just you it, know, I want to, but it's just I don't got the time for it, man. Like to me, it, it's I got to put attention to it, even though I'm not physically rhyming and doing much production. It's more of like me, you know, uh, curating the whole project and picking all the production. And you know, I'll work on the production kind of on some puffy shit, but you know, like right. I'm back there, like you know, which is which is real, <laughs> real production is Quincy Jones, shit, you know, what I'm saying, like, right? Right, right, you know, but uh, <laughs> but you know. I I just put so much into it, and I and I really handpick who's on it, and and it, and it just takes a lot out of you that I have to have the time and have to be the right time. And right now I'm a I'm a father of two young kids, which that takes mm. off you know most of my time and my energy right now. Oh, okay, mm. yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, man, look, I got six kids, so I know. Woo. <laughs> Damn, okay. six kids. Well, I got two homies with five kids each, and you beat them. You wild, man. You a <laughs> yeah, wild man. I got six kids, and then you know I got three step kids. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, so you talking about me? I'm, I'm 
Woo! Two kids, you know what I mean? So my youngest is seven, my oldest was. He's his own, yeah. He six kids. That's a lot I'm of kids, a, right? Got a phone call. That's a lot. Yeah, I'm back. Got a phone kids. call. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know, mm -hmm. yeah, it does take a lot out of you, especially you know, you know, when you're trying to chase your dream and 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 and, and doing some other things around. So it definitely, David it's does. Tough. I definitely know. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you know, you, really good. Can't. I hear. I hear. You can hear me. We can't yeah. hear you. You can't hear me. Cut your mic back on. I hear you though. You hear me? Okay. <laughs> you can't hear me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can hear me fine, right? DJ? Yep. Okay. Perfect. So actually, that brings me to a question, right? Because I'm really big in astrology and things like that. So, what is your zodiac sign? I'm a Gemini. And most importantly, I'm a May Gemini. That's okay. important. I always say that. I ain't a June Gemini. I'm a May Gemini. Look, so, what that mean? What, do, what does that mean? I think the. You know how people have Gemini's get a bad rap, and I think it's all having to do with June Gemini's. <laughs> they're the ones. they the ones that, that embody they're all the crazy. negative stereotypes of Gemini's. Oh, they the twins. So, think about it. It's it, Tupac is June and Biggie is May. Facts. Tupac was a wild boy, and Biggie was the one that was a little bit more, you know, chilled. So he was a little laid back. A little bit more laid back. Oh no, now you. I don't know about that one now. <laughs> y'all all crazy to me. Look, Gemini's, look, let me tell you something about y'all. You guys are a master at, you know, being able to, let me get uh, set back in, being Y'all back able in. to multitask, right? You guys right. can carry on a lot of different projects at a time like nothing, right? And for the rest of us, we'll be looking like, how the hell you can do all this? This is <laughs> what you master, right? You can have a lot going on and still be able to manage. Uh, right. Somehow, and it could be the twins. I don't know which one we can get from day to day. <laughs> you know, you see, you, that's the June. That's June Gemini. We not that major. Uh, like, we don't do none of that, man. We don't do none of that. No, no, not about that. I didn't date a. Uh, that's Tupac. I'm Biggie. I've dated what, a May Gemini now. He's what? What? what, what Pac was the May Gemini though, right? Nah, Pac was the June Gemini, oh, and June Big June. was the May Gemini. Hmm. That's crazy because Pac did like sixteen things. That's true. Dang. And and he switched, you know, he was Digital Underground Tupac and then he was Death Row Tupac. That's true. Biggie That's true. was pretty consistent across the board. So yeah, so we That's so true. we definitely got both the both Tupacs. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. In one era, you know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? So but yeah, I mean, man. So damn, Gemini. that's crazy. I, say what? Say what, baby? Jim and I love that you're great at what you do. That you have a passion and a drive for it. It's just something that you do naturally. You know what I mean? Right. Um, because Jim and I they love to talk. Right. They, they love to talk. They're very social. You know, they'll listen and things like that. Very attentive, uh, very detail oriented. And you tag teaming with Nori. Do you know what uh, sign uh, Nori He's a, a Virgo. Virgo. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to do like this. Okay. <laughs> damn them Virgos. Shout out to Nori, though. But damn them Virgos. The Virgos, Virgos are crazy. They're crazy. They just get on your nerve. They mouth, <laughs> just they mouthpiece. You know, you just be like, want to bow, bow. So. Right. That's, that's why that's why, that's why, why Nori's a dope artist. That's exa exactly. <laughs> okay. Nori, where, what's up, dog? We, we, come on, dog. We need you on the show, dog. You need to vouch for them Virgos because I'm like over oh, y'all, okay? So <laughs> right. I like Gemini's though. Um, but Gemini's so, run the industry. A lot of Gemini's in the industry. And the a lot of Gemini's run the industry, man. The they, industry. Man, you guys run the industry. I just I, know I, notably Kanye's a Gemini. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you he's a June Gemini though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think he's quite for sure. But I can almost guarantee he's a June Gemini. Is he a June Gemini? Let me look. I he think probably uh, he probably. I, I'm, I'm pretty. Andre Three Thousand, I think, is a Gemini as well. Because he's a who else? A Gemini. One of them is a Gemini. I'm pretty sure it's Andre. Andre three thousand is yeah. a Gemini. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna say he's a May Gemini. I think he is a May Gemini. Yeah, because he's he laid is. back, right? It's just a little bit more laid back. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you had did you have Outcast on one of your mixtapes before? Oh yeah, yeah. No, when I did Pirate Radio, um, they came to promote uh, AT Aliens, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, and they came to my show. And did a whole interview with them, and they hung out, and then then they performed at Studio One Eight Third, if I'm not wrong. And I got, I got, yeah, I got pictures with them, and and I got some clips from that interview with them. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's Outcast that. is definitely uh, when I when I when I was looking up uh, you know, how many mixtapes we had, you know, had brought out like brought out was like forty something, forty two, forty three, or something in that, you know, around that number. And and I saw that, you know, I said, wow, he had Outcast. That's 
that's big, man, because a lot of people, well, what I've noticed and, and seen in the industry and, and, you know, a lot of people can't get outcasts to, to, you know, it's hard to get them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to get them. They, for sure. You know, for sure. Of, right. yeah, legendary group. So just the fact Super that legendary. you did eventually, hey, I got outcasts on, you know, on one of my projects. That's that's big, man. That's definitely yeah. big. There's a lot, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people don't, you know, for I, for I understand, it's, it's hard to do. Well, let me say this, because if, if we're talking about Andre 3000, right, being a Gemini, having to take a break from the game, right, uh, having to detach, if you will. Mm -hmm. So let's let's bring it to the during we are in the Libra season. We're coming to the end and we're getting ready to go into the Scorpio season, which is me because my birthday next week. But anyway, <laughs> bringing it back during the Libra season. How do you find a balance between your family life? You mentioned you have two kids, a family life and work life because because your wife you guys kind of do things together as well so right. how do you find a balance in that it's not easy not yeah, at I all know. i'm still trying to figure it out it is this is definitely not easy it clashes um with family life but my kids and my family are are you know the utmost importance but when you're an entrepreneur and you you know you you, you kind of you're self-employed you know, it's hard. You, you, there's things that get sacrificed there. And um, and when you're creative, too, like we talk about this, I have another podcast called Fatherhoods mm. and and we're always talking and exploring with our guests. Like, how do they maintain or find creative spaces for themselves mentally when you got, you know, the kids? And it's, it's difficult. It's really difficult. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Mm. Yeah, I think we I think especially as, as parents and fathers, man, we 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 always trying to figure it out trying to yeah. balance that you know what i'm saying and it's like you know f you feel like you you missing something you know what i'm saying like if, if you know because we're trying to you know take care of the family get you know chase our dream and be a husband father co-host creative right. content creator you know we try we trying to do so much and yeah that the balance it's it's got to okay where do we find where do we find the balance because you know always the skill is going to be off every now and then especially you know, being a father, you know what I mean? Definitely. Cause I, I, de I definitely know this, yeah. six kids, three step kids. And the, and the young ones, the young, year, when so, they're young, yeah. when they're so young, they, right. they need the parents around. They, they exactly. need both parents, you know, exactly. Right. I'm not, you know, I, I was raised with a, you know, single parent, my mother, and, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm a present father there. And then th there's no lack of me being around. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love gotcha. that. I, I definitely love that. It definitely is important uh, nurturing the children, generally between the ages of one and 10 in particular. They need both parents in the mm -hmm. household uh, to be able to give them that balance. Um, right. So I'm with you on that for sure. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, because we're getting ready to come to the close, but I wanted to ask you here, uh, DJ EFN, what inspires you? Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, yeah. uh, because I find inspiration in a lot of different things, but... Okay. You know, honestly, just seeing other creatives um, like that are passionate about what they do, doing doing what they do and seeing them do it, whether it be a movie or an album, you know, or even just artwork, straight up artwork. Mm -hmm. When I see other creatives, you know, I, I get inspired, you know, mm -hmm. and then actually... I have this, I don't know if, if you guys know, but I do this film series as well called Coming Home, which yeah. I, is a documentary series. I go to different countries and I kind of explore the country with my crew through their hip hop scene. Like I meet mm. the people, oh you know, that are in the hip hop scene there and they kind of like are tour guides. And, mm. you know, we, we go to countries that we would say over here are, are you know, poorer countries, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's been another big source of inspiration to see how these how the hip hop culture in these countries ha is thriving, you know, the passion that they have for it, where they don't have the same resources we have. And we, you know, someone here might be complaining, like, you know, why they, they not on or what they can't do and this and that, because they don't have the new laptop or they don't have a, you know, a connect in the industry or whatever. These people aren't complaining. They're, they're just creating because they just love creating art. Mm. Um, and so that inspires me a lot when I, when I'm traveling, like traveling inspires me a lot. That's what's up. That's dope, man. Yeah, I seen. Yeah, I got to check that out, man. I, I didn't even know, you know, when I was doing research, I didn't even know you did. You know, you was you was heavy in the film. You know, what I'm saying you did quite a bit of films and docu series and stuff like that. So that's mm -hmm. definitely something I'm definitely going to want to check out. Definitely, I'm definitely going to sure. check that out, man. 
really, sure. really appreciate that. that Thank you. you know yeah, we just partnered up with LL Cool J and Rock the Bells for those films. So, oh, nice. uh, yeah, you can currently nice. the, the ones that are out right now uh, that were actually on Revolt before. Um, but now Rock the Bells is showing them on, on Rock the Bells dot com. And then we're working on new ones is uh, you could watch Coming Home, Cuba, Haiti, Peru and Vietnam. And then oh, that the ones that haven't come out is Colombia and South Africa. OK, we've already we already finished those two as well. Definitely, man. Let it man. I definitely like let that. us know, man, when you yeah. drop that so we can we can support it. And, and, sure. and thank you definitely man let us know we drop that so we can it's support it on the radio and um you know what i mean and our platforms and stuff like that man we, we definitely I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that we <laughs> have this little that. we have this little little game if you will i don't know if it's a game um dj efn but you see the the question on the screen right so we have this thing where we go across <laughs> platforms no i'm for real y'all know i'm crazy i am shay speaks life i don't care whatever <laughs> look we got this thing right so you know hobby where you know one of our co-hosts uh he has this thing he hates he despises he uses the word and hate is a strong word right, right. he hates pineapples on pizza and he thinks it's really weird right so you know every time we run across it a guest, right? Uh, we hold rooms on Clubhouse. I'm not sure if you're you know familiar with the Clubhouse culture yeah, absolutely. Clubhouse yeah. app, right? We definitely want you to come on in too. We host a lot of rooms here and uh we go through and ask each and every person, do you like pineapples on pizza? Right now, we are reigning champions of people actually do favor pineapples on pizza, probably about a 60 to 40 split. So I'm gonna ask you, do you like pineapples on pizza? I'm gonna give you a Gemini answer. Oh shit! Oh, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind it, but it's, I don't prefer it. Cause, cause you know, Cubans. I'm Cuban, and and if you say if you go somewhere and say, let me get Cuban pizza, it usually has pineapple on it. I never really cared for the pineapple, but uh, I like I like pizza so much. If, if that's the only pizza, is the one with pineapple. Are you kidding? I'm me? fucking that shit up. <laughs> so, so it got to be a no choice. They had to, to eat the pineapples on the pizza. They got to be no choice. Yeah, I prefer not to eat it, but I don't mind it. Like it don't bother me if it is there. I just prefer that it not be on there. That's a now you right about that. You know that's a damn Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, come here, go away. I love you. I hate you. But damn, which one is it? Both. But you see, I didn't say I hate you. I just said I prefer not. I you don't hate the not. pineapple. I know. So he, I have he, to he, like he, the he pineapple a little bit to want to not mind it. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So you're not so so you're not gonna order the pizza. You're not gonna order it for yourself. But let's say if your wife order it, yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and eat it though. But I'm not gonna order it for myself. Yeah, I mean, if I'm hungry and it's pizza and it got pineapple, I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't really, I wouldn't have ordered that one, but fuck it, I eat it. You know? Gotcha, gotcha. But if you order pizza with anchovies, I ain't fucking with that shit. What about olives? Oh, yeah, yeah I fuck with olives. There you go. Boom, boom. He like them olives. I don't do them olives. They all right. My girl hate olives. Yeah. What yeah, what, what sign is your girl? What, what, what sign? Is She's a right? Gemini also. She's born the day before me, just 10 years earlier. Are you serious? Yeah. I definitely, I, we're going to need you on another podcast. Uh, myself and Seth Wines, we have a Zodiac Couple podcast. I'm in. Um, and so, yes, this is interesting. We That's found two Tauruses okay. that are married. Wow. We've never had two Geminis. Yeah. How do you? Well, guys... it's, it's very difficult. What the? So, so it's four people live in the house. <laughs> no, <Nah>, man. <laughs> See, I don't. I don't subscribe to that double personality shit. This is what I tell people. I say we 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 uh we can adapt very easily to situations if we want to. Okay. Yeah. That's some, true. Some, we can I, be I, stubborn I, I about it. I get y'all that. Y'all y'all very okay. easy. Yeah. I I can give y'all that. I can give y'all that. I do. That's what I'm saying. Like the June Gemini, they different though. They they give you two a whole other person. Yeah. They they can. They definitely can. <laughs> They they don't stalkers. I didn't have a few. Right. Okay, but anyway, anyway, definitely I we definitely appreciate you here coming on to Piff Radio, taking time out of your busy schedule to definitely come chop it up with us. We definitely Absolutely. have to have you back here uh, on the platform here at Piff Radio. Where can the audience find you? Uh, everything at Drink Champs, DrinkChamps.com, mm -hmm. CrazyHood.com, and then my my Instagram is at Who's Crazy. The crazy is the Gemini um <laughs> and uh at dj efn on twitter dope dope hey uh appreciate hey, shout out to you you know what i'm saying and nori and your, your drink champs i know y'all was y'all became like the top number one uh podcast of the summer or something like that what Music? i was reading yeah, yeah. it, it fluctuates saying? but yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure. you know what i'm saying uh, uh shout out to that man y'all been number one for a minute anyway 
<clears throat> y'all been number one for for a pretty pretty long time. I just yeah. I like to tell people we're we're, we're consistent and and right. we're consistently at the top. But that you know that'll fluctuate up and down. But but you know we're consistent, and that to me is the most important part. Right, right. That's y'all important. definitely doing a great. Y'all definitely doing a great job, man. Yeah, thank you, and, you, you thank Nori. You. Y'all y'all doing an absolute great job. Giving flowers to a lot of the hip hop legends. That's which that's very very important. What a lot of a lot of people didn't do and platforms mm-hmm. didn't do at the time. And you guys came right. in and did that for the hip a lot of the hip hop legends. So I, I really rec- commend y'all for that. And seeing you know seeing a lot of the legends you know say come on and speak and, and tell their stories in hip hop. That's great, man. For especially for a hip hop fan like me, that's great, man. I really appreciate y'all for doing that, man. Thank, Thank you, man. So much. Appreciate it. Thank y'all Definitely. so much. Let me get my pineapples pizza off of here because we ain't talking about no more pineapples on pizza here. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of y'all. Why you do me like that, man? I thought we was cool. That's that Gemini-ism. <laughs> That's that Gemini-ism. I, I want to do your wife like you know. I'm asking next time. Do you like pineapples on your pizza? She probably don't. She probably no. Nah, I don't. Do. I don't think she does. Now that I think about it, <laughs> she it's probably so- think it's some Cuban shit. She's like ah. <laughs> She's not Cuban. She should be like, ah, that's some Cuban shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. She goes, yeah, that's some Cuban. Yeah, you know, give her the Cuban coffee, dog. You give her the coffee in the little cup. You know what I'm saying? She'll, oh, she'll, she, she'll drink the coffee. Oh, I love that coffee. I love it. I love it. It's give me right up. I'll be like, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, I'll be ready for the day, okay? That's that liquid cocaina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. You, you can't you serve a little cup like this? Yeah, man. <laughs> You can't drink a regular cup of that. Stay away from that. Before <laughs> we get out of here, though, <laughs> DJ EFN, can you give us the drop for Pimp yep. Radio before we get out of here, man? You ready? Yes, sir. We are ready. What up? What up? It's DJ EFN, one half of the Drink Chance Crazy Hub Productions. And right now, you're locked in Piff Radio. Keep it locked. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Definitely appreciate it. We got Jay Pitt. Owner and creator of Piff Radio in the building. Peace, peace, peace. Hey, EFM, man. I appreciate you for pulling up to the show. Right. I know we had a, a lot of reschedules, but we got it knocked out. We got it done. We got it done. Yeah, I appreciate that. Nah, I appreciate cool. you guys. Thank you very much. About to run and do Fatherhood's podcast now. Cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. We gonna, we gonna check that. Really as a father, I'm definitely going to check that out, man. We got to have you on. You got six kids. And what did you say? You got like three extra ones? Like, is yeah, that- three. And Shay Shay, my fiance. So I got three We're seven, together. Kids, six kids. That's nine kids. That's nine kids. Nine you kids, wild right? for nine. that. You wild for that. <laughs> Miami. That's a Miami. I'm gonna have kid. to bring you with my with my homies that got they got five each. So they ten just two people, ten kids right there. Man, well, shoot, they're gonna be sixteen right there. That's sixteen right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all, y'all need to form a, some kind of a team together. Just y'all three. Well, you know, you know what I was gonna do, man. I was going since I'm you know doing the music myself, I'm a producer myself, so I was like. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and Joe Jackson, my kids, man. Yeah, heck yeah, nine. Get that Get stuff. Right. One Too of them's gonna be Michael Jackson, right? Yeah. So somebody Michael Jackson in the school, somebody gotta be. The law <laughs> average is gonna kick in with nine. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, man. <laughs> all right, yeah, I got, I gotta get going, guys. Definitely Appreciate it, man. All right, thank you, so man. Thank you, man. We'll do it again for sure. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, Thanks. peace. All That's right. what I'm talking about. All right, that was good. Let me end the recording here, guys. I'm gonna end the recording. Yeah, yeah. End the recording. Right. In the room. Audio call. Peace.